Dhaka for this project, this wala, which is a uh, non-profit organization actively working on various policies related for developing our, our country. So talking about the project, wala, it, it is a drive to show, uh, to share knowledge and spread awareness about issues surrounding uh, menstruation. It seeks to reach out to young girls via multiple platforms, providing them providing them uh, with a forum to learn about menstrual hygiene management and share their views, experiences about menstrual taboos, choices, and practice. Kalra Ma'am, who joined as a member of National Human Rights Commission April 2017, before joining the commission, she was an advocate of record at the Honorable Supreme Court of India. She did her Bachelor of Commerce from Delhi University and completed her Bachelor of Law from Campus Law Center, Delhi University as well. She has filed many PILs, significant among them uh, uh, is opening up channel uh, for females to practice as a makeup artist in cine industry and raising uh, the non-recruitment issue of women armed forces. After being appointed as a member of NHRC, she has been dealing with subjects related to women and children's rights, LGBTQ rights, also trafficking and reproductive rights. She has been honored by the Supreme Court of India for her three books. She uh, was given uh, the uh, Outstanding Women Award in 2014 by the National Commis Commission of Women India. She is a passionate activist uh, working with many NGOs, she had been uh, uh, she uh, had been uh, deliberate on many rights uh, issues of women, which include surrogacy, female feticide, witch hunting, etc. She has uh, represented many papers in country and abroad. Re uh, 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 in the past, she has enjoyed uh, imparting education as in part time lecture in the Faculty of Law, University of Delhi, as well as IP Uni IP University which comes under University of Delhi. So now I would like ma'am to uh, come forward and share her views. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Shruti. Uh, and I am glad that I think India has taken up this topic, topic of women's importance. Uh, but I would like to correct this first, as you said, that this is an exercise to reach out to young girls to talk about menstrual hygiene and menstruation and everything. I would like to correct you by saying that it should be an exercise to reach out to young girls as well as boys. Because menstruation is not something, or if you will say pregnancy, it's not something which is, uh, which is for women alone. To talk about this, to discuss this, is a joint and collective responsibility of the entire society and which includes the men. Uh, the most uh, disturbing thing is that till day uh, as a society we do not talk about menstruation. I'm not saying taboo and everything, we just do not talk. So not talking itself, you know, when the thing is not being discussed, so it being a taboo or it being not a taboo, it being welcome, is, it doesn't come into the fray. We are just silent about it. We are just ignoring it or we are taking it as if it is not required. Or maybe we do not talk that this is not a good topic, a good topic to discuss about. Because I was listening to this Kamna on all some issues that uh, sanitary napkins uh, or something were left. Leaving sanitary napkins or loose sanitary napkin is being taken as if something some some uh, tona is being done, something like that. I mean, if it is being discussed, it is being discussed in that context. So, which is very sad as a society when we are developing, when we are talking. Uh, I think it's not only sad, but it is journey too, because at a time, the time was there when the women were not allowed even to study. It was being thought that women will sit back at home, there's no need for the girls to study. But then gradually the society accepted it, that women need to study. And then there was time that uh, it was quite older, but the, a woman or a widow was not allowed to marry. There was a time when a, a widow was made to sit on the fire of her husband and she would die. A time when a child, a six-year-old girl was married. So this is evolution, this is a journey, you know, the women have under, undergone. 
and the women had to fight on every front even you know in my introduction you have mentioned about those litigations that not only that there are biases on the family front there are biases even on the institutional front biases in the legislature biases by the tradition or biases or to be very to be honest there are discrimination continuing still continuing so not talking about menstruation is also that journey not solution which which will overcome with the society will also overcome when i saw that movie padman i was really impressed by the efforts being done by akshay kumar that he made movie on that topic and this turned out to be a very successful movie and the way the movie was made and it was on the life journey of the person who, who a man who talked about uh, what is menstruation and how to make women how to uh, ensure that the women have a safe menstruation uh, period so it is such a such an important topic and such an important part of the life which which we were we never even felt like talking so coming back to that uh, movie padman you know when that was the beginning of uh, institutional or on a social uh, platform talking about menstruation and i would like to as i was told that uh, uh, but i should talk about my own uh, uh, that is when i talk with i should talk about my own person i mean how did i uh, experience it and how did i uh, i lived with this menstruation so i think that is more important because we must have the insights rather than talking something which is uh, more of a, you know like bhashan bhaji talk about our own life so that people get connected to that so uh, uh like i had my menstruation when i was not even 12 it is like about 42 years before or something and i did nothing about it so when i had that experience first then my only uh, my how i reacted to it my mother said yes she said okay my mother was very comfortable with it but i uh, responded or reacted uh very uh, strongly you know, not that i will go to the doctor and i'll get it set right said how this can happen i mean for me as a child it was something like this cannot happen to me and i was very confident that i'll go to the doctor and i'll set this thing right so that is also one at the beginning with i think uh, the girls as well as the boys should know about puberty and parents and the schools also it should be discussed because uh i could talk to my mother it i could have been possible that i might not even talk to my mother taking that this is something which i should conceal or it is something which is happening to me which is unnatural so the the first thing should be that then we uh, the parents the schools the peer we must all talk about menstruation that it is connected with the puberty and i think this is part of that sex education how we should have it that is something different we can have we can have a uh, argument on that the form to with the sex education should be there the form in which we should discuss about the reproductive organs we should uh, discuss about the sexual activities that may be different but there is no doubt about it that that part of the body the reproductive system of the body must be discussed from at the very uh, initial levels uh, even at the stage where uh, when it is the child i mean before the puberty So at the age of about ten something, you know, the the children should be made aware of this development, and uh, then uh, the difficulties of the women have or the girls have about toilets, because uh, menstruation. Uh, I think everybody who has joined, and I am again finding it is more. Uh, most of the participants are women, I think, isn't it? the name which i can make out uh almost uh, very few are uh, males but it should have been a collective or a joint venture because it, when we are discussing we should discuss with all so then you know that toilet part is also very important when the young girls go to school and the school dropout of this young girl one of the reason is that menstruation and they do not have the safe spaces where they can change their sanitary napkins or this thing i mean if people have watched that movie batman i am talking about the i am addressing the males who are there in this house 
that uh, when a woman menstruates, you know, there is a regular flow of blood from her uh, vagina. I mean, regular, continuous flow of blood. So anything, you know, there can there is a limit for absorption. The sanitary napkins which are being used by the women. There is a limit to absorption. So at a point of time, that sanitary napkin, I mean, the, the capacity of these sanitary napkin is off. So then that uh, the, the, the plant which is oozing out of the vagina, then it starts uh, out of that sanitary napkin and it starts uh, spotting, which we call it as the girl's clothes. They start getting the blood stains the girls start getting blood stains on their clothes and at time it is like undergarment there are other things and even on their outer clothes that stains can come because of not getting time or not getting the opportunity or not having a sanitary napkin at their disposal can very normally be and result into blood stains on the clothes of the girls so uh, in the schools level at the schools or at any public places Availability of sanitary napkins should be there and uh, uh, and separate to toilets also and toilets with flowing water, which is must, which is not easy, which is not easy because even now at uh, National Human Rights Commission, the complaints are being received and I came across a situation at the uh, schools where the toilets are separate toilet with running water. Having a toilet is not a ultimate solution. Toilet means a toilet with running water. Well, I mean, if it is not there, if it is not clean, that there is no point having a toilet. So the toilet means toilet with running water. Toilet means the toilet having an attendant who ensures that it is a clean toilet. So that's also some issues which girls uh, at young age and including me uh, come across. And then again, you know that it is a very simple, plain, natural natural, biological thing which is happening to everybody. So, I mean, making it a taboo or, you know, having a blood stain on the clothes of a girl, it becomes such a big thing. It is, I mean, I, I at this age, I feel it is, it, there is no need to make it a issue. It should be taken very normally. I mean, which is, which I think, don't think it's an easy thing, but I believe that it should be taken very normally. It's a biological development, biological change. And as a human being, if I'm not able to manage it properly, uh, the blood stains should be taken very normally in that very spirit only. And, uh, and, and with this, you know, that uh, reading as I discussed, so availability of sanitary napkins, when I'm saying schools, and then I, the, the, this also includes colleges. Uh, the separate toilets or the changing rooms with sanitary napkins being available. That should, at every institution where the girls are studying, I think the, uh, the, it should be ensured that and the, the school or the college institute, uh, college management must have in mind that uh, a girl is not is not going to take a sanitary napkin just to just for any other reason. So the sanitary napkins must be made available wherever the young girls are going. I mean, school, colleges, or other institutions. It, the availability should be ensured. And I think if the uh, if they the have some uh, monetary constraints or financial constraints, so let them be made available subject to payment of some money. So availability should be ensured if they think that it's going to cost that, so they may put some cost. If uh, in worst case scenario, some cost will be put for making the Senate in the world. And uh, going further, you know, I mean, uh, uh, menstruation uh, uh, and, you know, I mean, then uh, even girls at homes and after marriage, there are the, live in that society where still the menstruating girls are not allowed to participate in the religious uh, ceremonies in the home. Like uh, I remember my mother-in-law used to have that cake during uh, uh, this uh, 
Navratras, Khetri, Khetri, uh, some put some seeds in that and then that blossom with Devi in, in, uh, in prayer to Devi. But where that was kept, if I am menstruating, I am sure you would expect me not to visit that place. That has been happening, that happens. So that's also something when we are talking, when we are discussing. So why should uh, the girls be not allowed to participate? If you are menstruating, you are not allowed to go to. You are not expected to go to. I don't want to make it a controversy. Uh, that uh, I, or I take it on any religious side, but as uh, as a person who talks, who discusses, and when you are talking on discusses this topic, discussing this topic, then the in the families because you know the religious uh, practices the in the families, uh, the women or the girls, there should not be any kind of restriction that if she is menstruating, she should not participate. This is my personal view. And it is for the audience or the participants to take it in the spirit they want it. But I, when I'm, we are saying that we should talk about it, and we should also talk about that, about uh, in furtherance of the same, that there should not remain any kind of discrimination or any kind of uh, action which which makes, uh, which isolates the women just because she's menstruating. And, and then, I mean, you come across such situations the woman is made to sit in a particular room or is not allowed to come out. So this happens, so this must stop. And we all, the participants, I think 47 participants are showing. So when we are discussing, so all of us, we must talk. Uh, as I said, you know, there are perceptions. This is what the society has perceptions about uh, the menstruation. So at that point of time, uh, that perception or these beliefs could have been correct or uh, they are existing. But now with change, we, the responsibility also, also lies upon us that we should also talk, start talking about that there is no point of any discrimination, there is no scope, there is no reason to discriminate on behalf of with the women because they are menstruating. So this is also something which needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, again, in this Padman also that, you know, when I, if you are purchasing the sanitary napkins from the market, you, uh, you are being given that napkin in a black kind of black uh, that uh, carry bag. So it's again, it's so uh, funny that what is this? This is not something non-vegetarian, or this is not something which is uh, uh, which is uh, unhygienic or anything. This is normal cotton napkin. So uh, that is also one. Uh, again, this can change only when like. I think India has taken this initiative of discussing this topic and this goes further. The, when we are talking, uh, although I think for the first time that on a play, public platform I'm talking on this subject. So this is how the perceptions also change. To give your idea, you give the logic and keep giving it and then only that uh, concept of perception uh, is also likely to change. So. Uh, Going further on that uh, experiences, uh, and then there are other issues also connected, medical issues. Sometimes uh, females have problems with their uh, uh, uterus and uh, or ovaries, so which results in quite heavy bleeding and all. So that should also be discussed and treated. And the treatment about uh, this uh, uh, heavy bleeding and uh, like... Uh, I was uh, one time, uh, I think, dance uh, must have been there, I don't know. Uh, but it was, we were discussing about the fate of uh, women in Maharashtra, some district I'm forgetting. Those women who were working in the sugar cane, this thing, and they used to get their uterus removed because the menstruation would hamper their working at the uh, sugar cane. Uh, so they would remove it. It is it was discussed in a very uh, as a, a great violation to human rights. But this happens. So and there also uh, I shared my own personal experience that uh, I had uh, at the later stage of my life I also developed that problem of heavy bleeding and everything. 
and all those doctors to whom I had gone, they suggested that uh, because it may not get cured, so you uh, the, the surgery your uterus can be removed. And there also I shared, and here also I would like to share. Uh, then I finally went to all India Institute of Medical Sciences and the doctor, gynecologist over there. He said, Madam, there is no need for you removing your uterus. Your this thing can be cured by a manina, a device which is inserted inserted in the uterus, which is only for two and a half thousand or three thousand rupees. And uh, slowly, you know, the this thing uh, very it works so slowly, and my entire issue was resolved. My that bleeding stopped. I'm totally cured just by inserting that device of two and a half thousand rupees. Manina is that device. So. If even those uh, the women who are working in the sugarcane industries or who don't want to have menstruation, you know, that is their choice. It can happen. So that small device, Marina, can work. So there has to be uh, awareness about uh, the uh, medical problem the women or the girls have because of menstruation. There has to be widespread awareness and discussion about the medical issues and the, how can they be resolved. And then uh, now I also had uh, an occasion to deal with the menstruation cup. And as I said that uh, when I was having very heavy bleeding, so I was so much disturbed. And I came across a friend who suggested me for a menstruation cup. And I found it to be such a useful thing. A menstruation cup is a device, it's a cup kind of a thing which you insert in your uh, vagina. And it only gets, when it gets filled up, uh, you will uh, get a sense of it because there will be bleeding, and then you just remove it and empty it, and you wash it, and you can again be as a. I mean, one menstruate the menstruation cup can last long, maybe for years. Like single menstruation cup, which I think costed around five hundred something. I mean, and there is no wastage. There is no uh, this thing. Environmental wastage, no throwing of sanitary napkins, no problem as to where to throw the sanitary napkin, no problem how to uh, how to this uh, regenerate that sanitary napkin, but because it is a it's a hazard also, it's blood basically. So it's so many issues uh, are connected with the disposal of the sanitary napkins that means and and uh, the cost cost involved in using the sanitary napkin. Single menstrual cup can be reused for year. I mean, months or years. It can it may vary. It may depend upon the quality of the cup. But uh, again, I'm saying that this kind of forum when we are discussing so these kinds of devices like many now our menstruation cup are so so much useful and can really change that uh, paradigm of uh, uh, menstruation and the costs involved with managing the menstruation. Everything can be changed, but uh, again, for that we need a lot of awareness. I I had even tweeted in my Twitter at a point of time about the when the prime minister mentioned about the menstruation. I also tweeted that this is also a time when we should start talking about menstruation cup and start choosing and discussing and exploring that device, which can be so very useful for the women uh, and. Uh, this, I think, uh, Shruti, I can, I can um, close my communication. If there is any question, I'm ready to answer. All the participants are, are requested to put their questions in the chat box so that I can ask. Let them ask rather than putting in the chat box. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Sure.
I think there is a question in the chat box. Uh, this is how means this is this is again a journey. Uh, going to rural women like uh, even Think India can plan to visit any village. Even during your view or this exercise of Rajasva and what suits. So uh, plan a visit to village and take uh, uh, your team along uh, and go to a village. Take the sanitary napkins with you. Take uh, the uh, menstrual cups also, as I said, and take some doctor who can impress upon or somebody who can uh, who is more aware of the medical things. Uh, this is the way uh, of uh, spreading the awareness because asking like uh, or you know uh, all of you young people so take I'm it as a just I'm you can take so it as a you can also take it as a uh, uh, as a drive like on your facebook like when uh, rajaspala when you're carrying out on your facebook or Twitter, uh, he put the uh, put the ideas about menstruation, and uh, that is the way how the awareness can be spread, either physically visiting and spreading it through the uh, social networking. This is how the things can be spread. As I said, perceptions have to change, and it takes time, a lot of time. Any more, any more questions? I think Shruti, we can. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. It was uh, delightful listening to you. Thank you, all the participants, for joining. Thank you, ma'am, for joining.